Hi everyone. Okay, so let's get started. Today we are going to see few more questions in stop and wait protocol. Okay, so let's start with that. Have you attempted this question? Let me know. So let's do this question. What they're saying is that that there are two nodes A and B, right? There are two nodes A and B, and you are transferring the data between A to B. Suppose the network uh, has the bandwidth from A to B is given that five kbps, right? From A to B, the bandwidth is given is five kbps. And the propagation time is also given to be 120 millisecond. So propagation time is also given to be 120 millisecond. Now what they are saying is that the path in the reverse direction from B to A. So basically, I mean, they have defined A to B as a different bandwidth and from B to A, from B to A, they have defined a different bandwidth. So maybe I can write this B to A here. Okay. So B to A, they have defined different bandwidth and all. So let's just see that what they have defined for B to A. So they are saying that uh, the path in reverse direction between has the bandwidth of 10 kbps. So this bandwidth is given to be uh, to us as 10 kbps, right? And the propagation time here is also different. So this propagation time is also given to be 80 milliseconds. Let the data packet have size of 500 bytes and acclimation packet has size uh, 100 bytes. Okay, so the length of data is given to us is 500 bytes and also length of ACK is given to us is 100 bytes. Okay, this is the information that I've copied from this question. Now they are saying, give the numeric expression for the throughput. A can achieve in transmitting to B using stop and wait. You can treat 500 byte data as transferring 500 bytes of useful data. Okay, which means there is no header and all. Okay, so from A to B, if you are transferring using stop and wait, and this is the size of data, this is the size of ACK, then what is the time? Sorry, what is the throughput uh, that you will be incurring? Can you tell me what will be happening? First, the data will get transmitted. You can say transmission time of data. And then this will get propagated from A to B, right? And then after this, this B will transmit the ACK. And then after that, what will happen? This ACK will get propagated from B to A. Right? So this is the total time that you will be taking. Yes, total time you will be taking. And, and what we call this time? Anyone remember? We call this time as RTT. Yes, this time is called RTT. So this is the total time that you will be taking. Now they are asking the throughput, which is very easy question. So just, just let me know what is the RTT. And based on that, you can immediately tell me the throughput. So what is the transmission time of data? Okay. So what is the transmission time of data? Can you tell me? This is length is 500 bytes upon bandwidth. Bandwidth, which, which bandwidth I, I should be taking from A to B or B to A? If A is transmitting, then which bandwidth I should be taking? A to B, right? This is common sense because A is transmitting to B. So obviously I should be taking A to B, uh, this bandwidth, which is 5K BPS. So uh, 5K means 10 is power 3, right? And uh, bytes per second. So uh, like ultimately this, this will be in the seconds. Okay. And then let's find out the propagation delay from A, A to B. It is actually given to us is 120 milliseconds. Okay. See, this will be in the seconds, right? If you want to convert that in the millisecond, then let's just multiply by 10 is power three to convert that into the milliseconds. Okay. Chiranjeev, let me just at least write the expression. You are asking something which is way ahead of the explanation. Okay. Let me just uh, go with the explanation and then you will automatically get your answer. Okay. So what is this uh, time for propagation from A to B? It is 120 milliseconds, right? I mean, everything is millisecond, which is fine. Now, what is this? What is this uh, transmission time from uh, for the ACK? Can you tell me the length of ACK? It is 100 upon 
Yeah, hundred bytes upon the bandwidth. Which bandwidth I should be taking? This one or that one? Ten into ten is power three, right? Uh, to convert that into the bytes, and then since ultimately this is in seconds, but I want in the millisecond. That's why I'm I'm multiplying by ten is power three. And then what is this number? This number is also given to us as eighty millisecond, right? Plus eighty. Okay. So see, this is the expression for RTT. And if you calculate all the numbers, then you will be getting this. Now, can you, can you tell me what is this? This will be hundred milliseconds. This will be 120 milliseconds. This will be 10 milliseconds. This will be 80 milliseconds. So ultimately it is coming out to be 310 milliseconds. This is what RTT. Now tell me, suppose I just tell you the RTT. Okay. I don't tell you any other information. I mean, um, for now, let's suppose I just tell you the RTT is three one zero milliseconds. Okay. I say that RTT is three one zero milliseconds. Can you tell me that what is your, um, throughput throughput will be length of data, right? 500 bytes you are sending length of data upon RTT bytes you are sending upon RTT is 310 milliseconds, right? Yes. Now, depending on the answer, I mean, they are asking bits per second or what they're asking. Let's just see. They are asking bytes per second. Can you tell me in the bytes per second? You need to, since this is millisecond, you can multiply by 10 is power, uh, 10 is power minus three here, or maybe above, if you want to multiply, it will be 10 is power three, right? So, which is 500 into 10 is power three. I mean, these many bytes, obviously we will be sending in per second. So this is bytes per second. Now, if you simplify this, what you will be getting? 1613 bytes per second. Okay. This is what you will be getting. I mean, you can easily simplify. Okay. This is coming out to 1612. Sorry. 1612. 0 0.90 bytes per second, which is, I mean, almost same as almost same as 1613 bytes per second. Is this okay everyone? Tell me how, how much difficult this question was. You just need to find, find it out, uh, the RTD. And once you find out the RTD, I think uh, it, it was very easy question, right? Then, then you can just tell me that what is the throughput, which is length of the data. Okay. And upon the RTD, that is the throughput. Okay. So 1613 bytes per second. Now that was the one way to find the throughput. Let's just find the throughput using efficiency also. Okay. So let's just find out the throughput. But I mean, instead of finding out directly, let's just first find out the efficiency. What is the efficiency? What is the efficiency? Efficiency is the, how you calculate the efficiency? Can you tell me? Transmission time upon this RTT, right? Which is uh, 310. So transmission time is given to us. Uh, so which transmission I, time I should be taking data or the, uh, or the ACK. So this is see you just, you just see the useful time. This is a useful time only, right? The useful time is TT. Is this okay to everyone? Is this the transmission time? Is this useful? Is the processing time somewhere in the between? Is this useful? No, right? So all other times are wasted time for me. I mean, the only useful and productive work I'm doing in this time, right? So this is the useful time for me. Is this okay to everyone? Right. And this is, you can see the total time you are spending, how, how you are spending doesn't matter. But anyway, this is the total time you are spending, right? So, which is coming out to be hundred millisecond upon three one zero milliseconds, right? This is coming out to be your efficiency. Now, once you have your efficiency, can you just multiply by the bandwidth and can you not find your answer? So the throughput will be throughput will be efficiency into bandwidth. Now, which bandwidth you should be taking? Okay. Chiranji, your question was this one, right? Was that your question? 
ओके 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 योर नेम इज चंजीव ओके चंजीव कांत सो विच वन वी शुड बी टेकिंग सी हेयर वी आर सेंडिंग we are sending a to b and then we are sending b to a now for the data which bandwidth we are using i mean efficiency of what or the throughput of what at a right you are finding the throughput of a throughput at a so for the data which bandwidth you are using no it's not uh, it's not about the bottleneck it's about for the data which bandwidth you are using if there are multiple from b to c then you can say for the data you are taking the bottleneck okay that is fine for the data you are taking the bottleneck Th that i agree okay if there is b2c also but but you don't consider uh, i mean you 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 are not uh, not here to find out the basically in this question you won't be finding out the minimum of a to b and b2a okay you won't be finding out the minimum of a to b and b2a yes sliding window most probably it will be tomorrow yes so for the data which which bandwidth you are using and in that you can take the bottleneck for the data which one bit you are using because this is the efficiency at or the or the throughput at a right you are finding out the throughput at a so which one bit you are using 5 kbps so the throughput will be for the data you are using 5 kbps right so 100 upon 310 milli okay this is this doesn't have any any unit and then into 5 right okay so yeah this is kbps okay this is k since it is in the kilo that is why i need to multiply by times power 3 to just get it in, uh, in the i mean kilo bytes per second or, or to just get it in, in the bytes so this is again if you if you check then it should be almost same as this number 500 into times power 3 divided by 500 into times power 3 divided by 310 right yeah okay so either you find out using that method or you find out using this method both are fine but here in case of throughput i prefer that you find out using rtt length upon rtt that's very simple right find, first find out the rtt and then length upon rtt this is the first method and this is second method right so so this is preferred so chanjeev is asking even though rtt also has transmission time of ack we only have to use bandwidth from a to b because we are measuring how we can send the data how much we can send the data yes basically we are measuring this link i mean throughput of this link basically okay throughput from a to b we are measuring throughput from a to b and what are the other delays whether it is transmission time of ack we are uh, taking or, or some other delays or whether this bandwidth is given or not given so it doesn't matter to us we are measuring that okay throughput from a to b how much data we can send on this link right how much efficient we are on this link so in case of data you will be you, you will be using from a to b only right if there are multiple if there are multiple links then you can take the bottleneck okay but i will say that you you prefer this method okay directly i mean the length whatever is the length of the data you are sending in in how much time you are sending so length upon bandwidth uh, sorry length upon uh, rtt is your final answer okay immediately you can get the answer so this question was from do you remember the uh, university name yeah berkeley and mit okay this question was from you can say mit uh, i mean uh, for me i first found out in mit and later i i saw that okay this question is also at berkeley university the same question right now let's do this question which uh, has been asked in gate 2016 this question is also same as the question that we have just solved do you want to solve this question as in homework or now let me know let's just quickly solve it now uh, i just want to oh, i just i just want you to solve only okay so here in this question can you tell me what is the rtt 
so what they are saying let me first read out the question they are saying that uh, frames frame size is given so length of data is given to you is 1000 bytes and the transmission rate at the sender so from a to b the transmission rate is given to you it is transmission rate means bandwidth right this bandwidth is given to you it is 80 kilobits per second okay they have also specified that uh, kbps means uh, 1000 okay i mean this k means 1000 okay size of the acknowledgement is 100 bytes so length of acknowledgement is also given which is 100 bytes right and the transmission rate at the receiver so at b the bandwidth is also given to be 8 kbps <laughs> One way propagation delay is 100 millisecond. Okay. So I think here they have not uh, said uh, it either it is A to B or B to A. So the both is same. So the propagation delay either at A to B or B to A, it is given as 100 millisecond. Now they are asking the throughput. Let's just quickly find out the RTD. What will the RTD? It will be transmission time of data, TT of data. And then propagation time plus transmission time of ACK and then propagation time. So what is the transmission time of data length upon what is the bandwidth bandwidth is given to be 80 since this is in bytes. Let me convert that to in bits. Okay. And it is in clo. Let me convert that to tennis power three. So it is bits per second and this is bits. Okay. This is transmission time of data, right? Okay. Should I go to the next page? Because I don't know if I have the space here. Okay. So this is transmission time of data plus this is transmission time of data plus the propagation time is I think given to us, which is hundred milliseconds plus transmission time of uh, the ACK, right? I think both will be same or not bandwidth has been divided by 10, but the, but the data is also divided by 10, right? Anyway, I can, I can do it again, but yeah, it seems like both the same. 100 into 8 bits upon length upon bandwidth. What is the bandwidth? 8 into 10 to the power 3 bits per second, right? Okay. And then finally, the propagation time, which is 100. So this is coming out to be 10, right? Uh, sorry, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 seconds, which means 100 milliseconds. Okay. This is coming out to be 100 milliseconds. And I think. I think this will be 400 milliseconds, right? So ultimately the RTT is coming out to be 400 milliseconds. Okay. Now you have your RTT, you have your uh, length. Can you not find out the, uh, the throughput? Length upon the RTT. Okay. 1000 upon 400. So the throughput will be length of data. Length of data is given to us as thousand bytes upon this is 400 milliseconds. Let me just check what they are asking. They are asking bytes per second. Okay. So you can convert that to seconds by multiplying by 10 to the power three, sorry, 10 to the power minus three. So you can uh, actually say. So you can say this is 10 is power minus three. So 10 is power three. So finally, the answer is coming out to be two, five, zero, zero. Yes. Sangeet, that is correct. Yes. Devansh. Yeah. I think everyone is getting yes. Uh, Chanjeev. So I think everyone is getting the correct answer, right? Shivam also got the right answer. Yes. So this is the correct answer. I think let me just verify it. If I have the answer here. 
Yeah, that is the correct answer, right? So you can see this question was uh, seems to be a little tough question for uh, many of the aspirants because of the upboards. Okay. Let's just see that how they have solved it. So you can you can see their answer. Throughput is the number of bytes we are able to send. So yeah. So they have also did the same thing, I think, right? Okay. The RTT and all. Okay. Now let's solve this question. Uh, have you understood by the way? Have you understood this question? Was there any difficulty in understanding this? Just find out the RTD and then you can find out the throughput, right? Okay. Now let's solve this question. What they're saying, host A and B are connected. Actually, this is the question from uh, last class only. Okay, host A and B are connected by a router R. So A and B are connected by a router R. If you remember, they have given that here the bandwidth from A to B, I mean, uh, last time we have solved it, the bandwidth, this bandwidth is given to be as, as 10 M a small BPS. This is also 5 capital M mega bits per second. Okay. Latency, which means uh, propagation delay is given to us as 22 milliseconds. Right. Now they're saying that host A sends 30 KB file to host B. Okay. So A is sending 30 KB file. Now, uh, I mean, if you are sending, let me write it here. If you are sending 30 KB file, then you can divide it into parts. Now they are saying uh, a file is divided into two packets, P1 and P2, where P1 has the length of 10 KB and P2 has the length of obviously 20 KB. Assume the pa packets are sent back to back. Tell me, is this stop and wait? If packets are sent back to back, is this a stop and wait? No, right? What is the difference between arrival times? So we have done this question. Do you want me to do this again? Let's just quickly do this maybe. Okay. So see here that uh, here, I mean, anyway, I need to calculate the transmission time and all. Okay. Yeah, it was 32. Okay. Let's not do this again. So what is the effective throughput between A to B? So I think that's, that's also, we did it right last time. Maybe I can just show you. Okay. Yeah, that is the question, right? So what is the difference between arrival times? How long it will take to send the entire file? And what is the throughput uh, between A to B? So here, uh, like I said that, okay, uh, this, this file has been divided into two packets. Now here they are saying, I mean, this question is basically the only part that I'm interested here is C part. Okay. This is little different from what we did uh, yesterday. So now they're saying, now assume the packet is acknowledged and the file is divided into six packets of the same size. So what is the size of one packet? If you want to divide the six packets of the same size, what is the length of data? Five KB, right? Okay. This is five KB. And now, yes, uh, this is five KB. Now they are saying that how long would it take to send the entire file? Uh, assuming that sender cannot send a new packet before it receives the acknowledgement. Tell me, is this a stop and wait? Let me know. Yes, this is a stop and wait, right? Okay. So uh, this is stop and wait. And now what they're saying, the transfer time is given to uh, the transfer time is the time interval measured from source A from the time the first segment is sent until the acknowledgement of last segment is received. Okay. This is the total transfer time. Ignore the transmission time of the acknowledgement. So transmission time of acknowledgement is uh, like they're saying it to ignore. Now they're asking that how long it will take. 
Okay. How long it will take if you're using stop and wait. Let's just see. Okay. So what is the transmission time of the data? Five KB, five KBPS. Uh, sorry, five KB is the uh, length upon divided by bandwidth. So this is into tens power three into eight, just to get it in the bits, and then ten into tens power six. This will be in the bits per second, right? So bits per second. So which means ultimately it is in the seconds. If you want, you can convert that to milliseconds if that is required, but let's just see. So this 10 is power three, this will cancel this. This will be 10 is power three. Now you will be getting 40 upon 10 is power four seconds. In terms of milliseconds, this is into, if you multiply by 10 is power three, it will be four seconds. Sorry, four milliseconds, right? Yeah, four milliseconds. Yes, Shivam, that is correct. Yeah, so four milliseconds. Now, what we need to do? We need to basically calculate the total transfer time. So for one packet, how much you are taking? Four plus 22 plus you are transmitting from here to here. This is transmission at A. So transmission at R will be taking five kbps. So bandwidth is half. Can you tell me uh, the transmission time? How much you will be taking here? If the bandwidth is half, obviously you will be taking double time, right? So it will be doubled. So you can say the transmission time here is eight milliseconds. Okay. So this is eight plus 22. This is uh, for the one packet to reach B, but it will be also acknowledged, right? So, because they are saying that, okay, each packet is acknowledged, right? So you cannot send, send before you get the acknowledgement. So this is for the data from A to B. Now for the acknowledgement that is coming from B to A, how much time you will be taking? You can say this will be plus 22 plus 22 only, right? Because uh, you can ignore the transmission time of acknowledgement. So finally it will be, this is 22 into four, which is 88 plus 12, I think, right? I think this is again 100 milliseconds. So this is coming out to be 100 milliseconds. Okay. Is this fine to everyone? Let me know if you have understood this. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah. This is 88 plus 12, which is 100. So this is 100 milliseconds. So which means for one packet, you are taking 100 milliseconds. How many packets are there? For one packet one frame. So six frames are there. This should be 600 milliseconds, right? Okay. This is the answer. Understood this question? Was this, was that question hard question? Do you think it was a hard question? Approachable, right? Actually, I thought that you may think that this is a hard question. So I first put it as optional question. Okay. Like, um, I mean, if you want, you can solve it. I, I put it as an optional question, but later I removed the optional thing. Uh, see, I let me just show you like this question I had yesterday also, but the question number 18 or 19, but I kept optional yesterday optional, right? So this is uh, yesterday's slide. Okay, lecture 14, but then I removed this optional today. I thought that, okay, now, now you are uh, mature enough to, to do this question. So, I mean, that's not very hard question. It is just that you need to be careful in calculating the data, right? Okay. Now, are you comfortable with the efficiency throughput questions? Actually, this is, uh, this is the mathematics that you need to do. Okay. So uh, like with the practice that we have done, you will not be afraid now. Okay. This is, this is my objective to do that many, uh, that much question practices. Now let's do this question. This question has been asked in gate 2017. Okay. Let's just see this question. What they're saying, the values of the parameter for the stop and wait ARQ protocol is given as follows. The bit rate of transmission channel is one MEPS propagation delay is given time to process is given number of bytes in the information frame. 
okay and the acknowledgement frame is given and the header size is also given i mean overhead okay so can you tell me the length of data if the information frame is this and the header is let's suppose 20 bytes so length of data is 2000 uh, okay there's some bytes right okay 2000 bytes actually in this question they have not mentioned that this information uh, information frame is containing the header i mean this is including header 1980 or without including header they have not given this uh, this information that is why that is why in the exam i mean in the answer key they have incorporated the range uh, a range in the sense if someone has solved using 1980 then they have given the marks to him if someone has sent uh, solved using 2000 bytes then also they have given marks to him have you understood why because here they have not given this 1980s including header or not this information is not given because of this they have given marks to all of the students who has solved using 1980 and those those students who has solved uh, without uh, i mean using 2000 okay is this fine to everyone okay now now let's just uh, read out this question further now assume assume there are no transmission errors okay then the transmission efficiency so they are asking the efficiency okay so anyway like they are asking the efficiency which is which is basically the transmission time upon rtt right and by the way what is the throughput length of data we are sending upon rtt right upon rtt this is the throughput so, but they're asking the efficiency. So transmission time upon RTT. Let's just find out the RTT and then let's just see that, uh, what is the answer we are getting. So see what they're saying that you have a to B you want to send from a to B. They have propagation delay. Okay. TP is given to us, which is 0 0.75 milliseconds. Bitrate is given, which is, I mean, bandwidth is given of this channel is one Mbps. Okay. Bandwidth is given to us, which is one Mbps. And now they're asking the RTT. I mean, they're asking the efficiency, which is, uh, I mean, once we find out the RTT, we can do uh, these questions easily. Now the processing time is also given, which is, uh, okay. The T processing. For a frame, which is 0 0.25 milliseconds. Okay. Uh, byte information, bytes in the acknowledgement frame. Acknowledgement length is also given. Length of the ACK is also given, which is 20 bytes. Have we done this question before? What do you think? This kind of question. I think, uh, I think that was one question. That was a mighty question and just a second. Let me find out that question just to check whether we have done th this question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was talking about this question. Okay. This is Berkeley question. Actually, uh, I clicked this question that we have done this question is because that here, the size of acknowledgement is given 40 bytes, right? And the header size was also 40 bytes. Okay. I mean, including header. So basically the size of acknowledgement is given 40 bytes, including header here and the header size itself was 40 bytes, right? So the acknowledgement size in, in reality is actually almost zero. So that is the, that is the thing that they also have here that they are saying that, okay. Uh, where is the, yeah, the bytes in the acknowledgement frame is 20. Okay. Again, they have not given, right? This is including the header or excluding the header. So this is, uh, yeah, this is, uh, again, the confusion. So that is why, okay. Don't, don't worry about it. That is why they have given the range. 
I mean, even though you have solved using 20, even though you have solved using 40, they have given the range. So, uh, should we consider it including, including or excluding? What do you think? Anything you can consider won't matter because this question is ambiguous. Okay. Okay. Let's just consider it including doesn't matter. So let's just consider it including actually, uh, there will be range. So you don't worry about these questions in the exam. If, if there is any confusion at the end, you will get the marks, right? Just solve it, uh, with whatever assumption that you are making. If the assumptions are logical, then you will get the marks. So let's just assume that this is include uh, inclusive. Okay. I mean, uh, my assumption here is that, uh, while I'm solving this, uh, let me just see that what they have done. I mean, in the answer, maybe just to check. Okay. They added it for ACK. They, okay. So we are aligned, aligned with the gator flow answer. Okay. So anyway, in the gator flow also, they have for this, they have, they have assumed that, uh, I mean, for, for one of the answer, this is just one of the answer that they have assumed that this, this bytes are not including header and this bytes are including header. Okay. So assumption here using which I'm solving this question is that data given as one nine eight zero, not including header. And ACK given 20 bytes, including header. Okay. I mean, don't worry, you, you will get the answer. So, uh, I mean, you will get the marks. So whatever you do, uh, if your assumption is logical, you will get the marks. Okay. This is my assumption that I'm assuming and, and then I'm doing this question, right? Okay. So now this length of data length of ACK, uh, that is fine. Now we want to calculate the RTT, right? Now the process time is given for the frame is 0 0.25 millisecond. Now, again, what they're calling this frame is this information frame, acknowledgement frame. I mean, I, should I be, should I be including this acknowledgement frame processing time as 0 0.25 millisecond or not? So again, this is, <laughs> this is again the ambiguity here, right? So let me just assume something which is little logical. I mean, whatever you do, see, they have given marks to all, whatever you have assume, assumed. Okay. They have given the marks to all. Whatever case you assume, they have given the marks to all. Okay. Coming to this. Now you tell me here, this processing time is given to us, which is, which is how much 0 0.25 millisecond. So this processing time, should I be taking as an ACK or for the frame or for both individually at 0 0.25? Let's just take it 0 0.25 millisecond process time for ACK. Should I be taking it 0 0.25 or, or logically it seems like I, I can take it zero. Yes. ACK frame can also take the processing time. Uh, re reason is very simple because this is also the data. You need to calculate something called as CRC check some, right? I mean, you may need to calculate some of the things you need to, you may need to process it. Okay. Where I mean, intermediate, uh, intermediate router or intermediate devices may need to process it that, uh, where it should be going. So obviously the processing time for, for, uh, ACK will also be there, but suppose this is zero. Okay. This is the assumption that we are doing. But the processing time can be incurred only when header is there. Yes, obviously header will be there. Header will be there. I'm assuming there's 20 bytes, including the header. Header is anyway there. ACK also has the header, right? Okay. These are my assumptions. And based on that, I'm solving this question. Let me know if that is fine to everyone. Fine. So now we question. Okay. So now let's just do this question. Now you tell me the RTD. Transmission time of the data. What is the transmission time of data? Length is given to us. So let, okay. Let me write transmission time of data. 
plus the data will get processed at some intermediate router processing time plus there will be it will get processed there will be the what we call uh, pro, uh, propagation delay propagation delay right and then it will reach there are no other delays for, for so this is for the data and then acg will also come back right so what are the times time that acg will be taking since acg length is given that's why i need to need to uh, write the transmission time for acg plus plus i am assuming that there is no processing time for acg and then there will be the propagation delay of acg okay so i think these numbers are given directly right the only two numbers we need to calculate and then we can find out what is the rtt so this number will be length what is the length 2000 2000 upon bandwidth bandwidth is all is in bits okay bandwidth is in bits so this is in bits now bandwidth is 1 into 10 to the power 6 this is bits per second so finally this this answer is in the seconds right if you want you can convert that to that into the milliseconds because i think other other numbers are given to as milliseconds so this is coming out to be 16 milliseconds okay yes now if this is 16 millisecond can you tell me directly what should be this if the bandwidth is same you are dividing this length by 100 so can you directly tell me what what it should be yes this should be 0 0.16 milliseconds right because this is 16 and the length is divided by 100 so logically it seems that transmission time will also be divided by 100 okay so finally let's just solve this question So this is 16 plus processing time is given to us, which is 0 0.25. Okay. Plus 0 0.75 plus 0 0.16 plus, uh, plus process, uh, uh, propagation delay 0 0.75, right? Okay. So this is one 17, uh, 17.75, uh, what it will be. So this will be, this number is 17.91. Yeah, 17.91 will be the RTD milliseconds. Yes. So you found out the RTD finally. And then what they are asking actually, they are saying, then the transmission efficiency. They are asking the efficiency. Okay. What is the efficiency? Transmission time upon RTD. So let's just find out the efficiency now. So the efficiency will be transmission time. Uh, what is that? 16 upon 17.91, right? I mean, I'm not calculating it, but yeah, let's just see. This number is 17.91. This is 16, which is coming out to be 89.34 percentage. Yes, 89.34 percentage. They've actually also uh, done the same assumptions that I did. So that is why we are getting the same answer. Okay. Now the range could be this. So they are saying that uh, the range could be this, which means, and also in the uh, in the final answer key, they have assumed. I mean, they have given the range, not just one answer. Okay, they have given the range, and range. I mean, they have given the range, which is okay, but that that is quite big range. Okay, not just revolving around eighty nine. Is this fine to everyone? If you whatever you have considered. Okay, whatever assumption that you have considered that will uh, finally give you some answer, which that answer that will be in this range only. Okay, cool. So that's what about this question. It was little ambiguous, but that is fine. I mean, sometimes it happens. Let me know if there is any doubt here. These are the assumptions that I have already listed down because wherever there was a confusion, I just listed it down, right? That okay, I'm assuming this and solving this question. Whatever seemed logical to me. Okay. But do these assumptions seem logical to you also? For example, the processing time of the ACK generally zero, data 0 
ACK given, I'm assuming, including header. The only reason was that I am basically biased uh, towards this assumption because I have solved, I mean, we have solved this question, right? And based on that, I got the idea, okay, I mean, uh, they generally mean that, okay, if ACK size and header size is same, uh, then they generally mean it includes the header. Okay. Anyway. So with this, these assumptions, we are getting this answer. So have you, have you understood this question or there is any difficulty? See, either they ask you throughput or they ask you efficiency. You need to find out one common thing. What is that? RTT, right? If they ask you efficiency, you do TT upon RTT. If they ask you throughput, you do length of data that you are sending upon RTT. That's all, right? RTT will remain common in both of the cases. Okay, so Chanjib is asking that since ACK also has the header, why we are not considering processing time for the ACK? Because the ACK size is very small, right? Which is 20 bytes only. So it will get processed, but that processing time will be negligible because the processing time generally includes, okay, the, I mean, some parameters like you will, uh, you will see it later that check some, check some of the whole data. So if the data length is bigger, then the processing will be bigger because we need to calculate some of the parameters there. Okay. That depend on the data size. If the data size is small, then the calculating checksum is very, very fast. And that is why you can ignore the processing time here. Okay. I mean, that was the only reason uh, that I have uh, for this assumption. Otherwise you can take any assumption and you can solve this question. Now let's do this question, which is question number 21. What they're saying, this question is again from MIT. This is easy question, but there is a purpose of this question that I'm showing, showing to you. Let's just see this question. Why, what they're saying, consider a 40 kilo bit per second network. So basically the bandwidth is given to you is 40 kilo bits per second, bit per second. This link, uh, connecting earth to moon, the moon is about 1.5 light seconds from earth. So the distance is 1.5 light seconds. Can you convert this distance to kilometer or meter or something like that? Let's just see. So let me first write, write down the whole parameters. Now they have given the length, length of the data to be one kilobytes. What data transfer rate? Okay. What does this mean? Can, can anyone guess data transfer rate means this utilization means what this must mean efficiency and data transfer rate could be achieved. Can be achieved? It will mean the throughput, right? Yes. Can you solve this question? So now let's just solve this question. Now this is the distance. So, I mean, they should not give something like this, but uh, this light second basically mean that, uh, I mean, you are, you are measuring in terms of three into 10 to the power eight, which means that, I mean, uh, if you go with the speed of light, you will be taking, I mean, 1.5 seconds, something like that. Okay. I mean, anyway, like if you want to convert that to meters, you need to multiply by three to 10 to the power eight. This, this actually mean that 1.5 uh, light second means that if you go with the speed of light, then you will be taking 1.5 seconds anyway. So you can multiply this by three into 10 to the power eight to convert that to seconds. No. Sorry to, uh, to convert that to meters. Right. Okay. So basically this is your distance. Now they have not given the velocity, but, uh, but here, I'm assuming, I mean, they should give it, but here I'm assuming the velocity is the same as the speed of light, which is three into 10 to eight. Can you tell me TP propagation delay distance upon velocity? So this number will anyway get canceled out. This is 1.5, right? This is 1.5 seconds. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. So uh, now what they are saying that can you find out the uh, efficiency? It will be what is the RTT here? TT plus two TP, right? There is no other delays. So TT is given to us as length upon bandwidth. Okay. So let's just find out the TT, which is length is one into ten is power uh, three into eight upon bandwidth is okay. Bandwidth is also in K. So let me not convert this K. Let me directly convert that to bits. And then this is also in the K. So ultimately this will be in the seconds, right? So one upon 20 seconds. Now, if you want, you can convert that to milliseconds by multiplying by thousands. So how it will be? Sorry, not one upon 20. I'm sorry about it. This is, this will be 0.2 seconds, which is 200 milliseconds. If you want to convert, but let me write 0 0.2 seconds, uh, 0 0.2 seconds only. Yeah, that is fine. So now this transmission delay is given to us is 0 0.2 plus this will be three, which is 3.2, right? Now, can you tell me what will be your efficiency? Efficiency could be the transmission delay, which is 0 0.2 upon 0 0.2 plus three. I mean, 3.2, right? So 0 0.2 upon 3.2, this is your uh, efficiency. Okay, let's just see the answer. So they, they are saying, uh, this is three, so 3.2, just a second. The utilization is, okay, they have found out the utilization using the throughput. Can you just divide it and can you tell me what is the answer you're getting? This is uh, one upon 16, right? So what is one upon 16? Zero point six two five. So if you multiply by the hundred, then it will be six point two five percentage, right? Six point two five percentage. This is your efficiency. Now, if you check the link utilization, okay, uh, this is interesting. So here, uh, I mean, they have not uh, calculated it here, but if they calculate it, uh, I mean, they have considered two cases. Let me tell you that what are those two cases. Okay. So what they have done, is this okay to everyone? This, all of these calculations and let me go to the next page because I want to convey one important thing here. Let's not worry about the calculation much. Let's just see the takeaway. Okay. So final numbers are coming out to be something like this. This is length. This is TT. This is TP, right? Good. Can you tell me the throughput? I mean, we can calculate the efficiency, but can you tell me the throughput? Because they have calculated the throughput first and they are also asking the throughput. Throughput will be length. Let me check the throughput there in the clue bits per second. Okay. Can you tell me the throughput, which is length upon band, uh, this RTT? Now, this is one into 10 is power three. Okay. They are asking clue bits per second. Okay. This is eight clue bits. Now the RTT is 3.2. This is seconds, right? This is also seconds. If I remember, yeah, this is also in seconds. Can you tell me what is the answer here? 8 upon 3.2. Two point five. Two point five kilo bits per second, right? This is the throughput. 
now if you notice that this is the throughput they are getting right okay so basically they uh, interestingly they have considered two cases they they have given the throughput like this also i mean in the next case they have not calculated the utilization which is fine so throughput is coming out to be this or this considering okay considering if this is this is if you apply this formula or you can get the throughput also if you apply this formula i mean the formula is same the only difference will be in the rtt if you are considering okay if you are considering rtts which is actually the more precise one if you consider rtts this one then you are getting this throughput but there are some authors which also also doesn't consider uh, this tt in the rtt okay they say that we will start rtt after the transmission time which means some some people consider rtt after this tt so in this case it will be just 2t if there are some processing delay or something then you you will definitely add it but but after tt time whatever is the time which means they say some people say that okay this is the rtt you have the transmission send it receive it so they say that rtt from here to here right from here to here this is what some people say and that's what we have used and that's how we have solved all the questions and don't worry i mean in the in the examination they will uh, not give you multiple options which is having two i mean different interpretation so i will come to that questions also uh, the gate questions also but for now let me just tell you one thing some people assume not just assume i mean some people say that after the transmission time we are going to say the rtt okay we are going to calculate the rtt some people say we are going to calculate the rtt from very beginning including the transmission time so now if you include the transmission time then then the rtt is this and throughput is coming out to be this if you don't include the transmission time then rtt will be 3 seconds here and throughput will be 8 kilo bits upon 3 seconds now if you do this then what you are getting 8 upon 3 2.66 right so 2.67 something like this kbps now these are the two throughputs you are getting depending on what you consider as rtt have you understood so some people consider this transmission time inside the rtt this is one interpretation this is another interpretation which one we have used first one or the second one in all the questions even in the gate questions the first one right the first one so we have used this but i will show you some gate questions also there they have used this interestingly and don't worry they won't give you the multiple options okay they won't give you the multiple options but this is my duty to tell you that what may so happen they won't give you the options which is 2.5 and 2.6 also so let's just see this is the pdf from mit okay this is a question from mit i mean we cannot challenge mit even uh, i mean until unless it is uh, very suspicious so i will i will show you some other standard resources also but in mit what they are saying this is this is from mit okay from MIT, what they are saying, stop and bait. Uh, they are saying per round trip round. Uh, okay, so the estimates above omits the transmission time of the packet, right? The above estimates, uh, the above calculation actually doesn't include the transmission time of the packet. If we include the transmission time also, then the numbers will be different. Throughput efficiency, whatever you want, you can calculate. If you include the transmission time, throughput is coming out to be this, and efficiency is coming out to be then in this case efficiency will come out to be uh, the transmission time which is 0 0.2 upon 0 0.3 right 0 0.32 this is the efficiency which is 1 upon 16 so efficiency will come out to be this which is basically 62.5 right 62. Point, sorry 6.25 6.25 percentage here here the efficiency will be transmission time 0 0.2 but the rtt can you tell me what is the rtt don't include this transmission time which means see okay this is sorry about it this is 3.2 and then it will be uh 6.25 yeah so rtt will be here just three 
Now, if you calculate using this, which is 0 0.2 upon 3 into so 0.3 upon 2 and then sorry, 0 0.2 upon 3. 0.2 upon 3. This is 0.66, right? So it will be it will be same as something like this. I mean 6.6 percentage or 6.5 percentage. Okay. I mean a uh, little bit calculation here and there. So basically, what I'm going to say is that if you include if you include uh, this transmission time this transmission time in RTT, if you don't include this transmission time in RTT, both of the interpretation are correct in most of the places. But here in our question, we will include it. Okay. RTT is including every time. Some people include it. Some people don't include it. So they are saying if we, if we don't include it, then we will be getting slightly different number and they have accepted both as answers. It's not like that. They are saying something is wrong. Something is right. Have you understood this? The purpose of this question, I mean, this question was very easy, but the purpose of this question is just to tell you that RTT may or may not include this transmission time. I mean, some people include, some people don't include. In the gate question itself, I will show you that they have not included somewhere. I mean, till now we have used, we have used this, but I will show you some other questions that they have not included somewhere. Let me tell you some other resources also. So this is from frozen. Okay. If you check this resource, they're asking. Okay. They're asking about utilization or the, or the efficiency. If you, uh, I mean, in the forogen, they have used a formula, which is TT upon two TP only. Okay. Forogen have not included, have not included. So they are saying, what is the bandwidth delay? Delay here means RTT and here the RTT, they have taken as two TP. They have taken. Okay. RTD they have taken as 2TT. So if you do using the, I mean, uh, in this forogen itself, they are taking RTD as 2TP, not as 2TP plus TT. So that's why the efficiency they have, they have uh, finalized using this formula. Okay. But at the same time, if you look at some other book, for example, 10 in mom, they've explicitly said that, do you remember that uh, we have uh, this one upon one plus two, right? I mean, efficiency, they've explicitly said that we need to add this one. Why we are adding this one? Because of the transmission time, right? You remember that the derivation here, this was transmission time plus two TP. So we are adding this one because of the transmission time only. They've explicitly said that we need to add one plus one because of the acknowledgement frame. See, they are saying, they are saying it very clearly that we need to add plus one because the acknowledgement frame will not be sent until after the complete frame is received. What, what do they mean is that you are sending something, right? Then, then let's just uh, look at the last bit. Okay. This last bit will be here. This is here. Now, the moment the last bit is here and the only first bit has reached, can it send the acknowledgement? Can it say, okay, I have reached the whole data. What if the data is, uh, data is having error? W what if there is some problem? Can it send the acknowledgement just after seeing the, okay, I have received the first bit logically. Does this make sense? Tell me, can this receiver send the ACK just after receiving this first bit? See, this is the first bit. This is the first bit. This is the last bit. Can this receiver send the ACK just after receiving the first bit or it should get all the bits last bit also? So that's what they're saying that you need to get all the bits. So they are actually calculating the transmission time at the receiver, which is okay. Right. I mean, you, you are either understand by the center or the receiver, which is okay. So they are saying the plus one is because the acknowledgement frame will not be sent until after the complete frame is received. So they are adding the transmission time. So in 10 and one, they're adding the transmission time. This is the RTT they're considering in forogen in forogen. They have considered that as RTT. Okay. They, have, they I mean, uh, you can solve this question. They have considered that as RTT in MIT, in MIT, this is from MIT. They have said that, okay, both are fine. Is this okay to everyone? This RTT confusion. Some people include transmission time in RTT. Some people do not include uh, some authors. Okay. People means authors. So, so let me write it. RTT. Some. Authors spelling is ER or OR. Authors include 
yeah this is or so include pt in rtd for example we have 10 in mom as an example right for example 10 in mom some offers doesn't include for example for ozone Right, MIT has accepted both, and we will. Sorry, not this one. We will include, right? So we will prefer this. So for us, RTT is from the very beginning till the very last. TT plus two TP plus any other delay okay we will include for us this for us means gate okay us means gate but in gate also i will show you they have given uh some questions and there there they are not including this transmission time okay but actually, this is the confusion of many students. They do not know. I mean, they do not understand whether so, uh, they should include or not. Because there is, I mean, uh, at the Gator flow also, there is, I mean, uh, no one has cited the uh, references. Okay, 10 mom frozen MIT. No, no one has cited the references. So once you cite the reference, then it will be clear that okay, some authors are doing this, some authors are doing this. And universities like MITs are accepting both of the uh, both of the cases as an acceptable answer. Okay, MIT has accepted both. Okay. Have you understood this? What I meant to say using this particular question? Cool. So we will include, right? Don't worry about it. Now let's just solve this question. What they're saying, consider the alternating bit also known as stop and wait protocol. Draw a diagram that shows if a network connection between the sender and receiver can reorder the messages then this stop and wait protocol will not work properly okay so do you remember that if you if you are getting the delayed data then it was just a luck do you remember that so let me just show you yeah see here See, if the data is delayed, then there will be a timeout here, right? There will be a timeout, timeout here. Then if the data is reaching where the receiver is expecting something else, then it will be discarded. But in the case, the receiver is also expecting this. Okay, I mean, uh, here it will be discarded. But in the case where the receiver, receiver is also accepting this, then it will be, receiver will be, uh, will be accepting, uh, I mean, taking it as a original or the good data. Right, because the receiver will say that okay, I'm expecting data zero and I got the data zero, then I think it is a good data. So it was just a luck if it will get reordered. So that's what they're asking in this question. That in this question, they have said the same thing that can you just draw the diagram where you can show that if you reorder, can reorder the messages, then alternating bit protocol, also known as stop and wait. Actually, this is a zero one zero one, that's why it is also called alternate bit protocol. They are saying that <clears throat> it will not work properly, will not work properly, right? 
your diagram should have sender on the left and receiver on the right. The time axis running down the page as we do in the class, showing that D and A is no mask. Okay. So can you draw the diagram that it might not work also? Right. Here in this case, it might not work. And and obviously, there is a case where I mean, by luck, if it is working, then it is just by luck. Okay. Understood this question? Let me know. So they are saying that if you are reordering, then the protocol might not work. Can you show the example? Then we have shown the example, right? We have all we have already done this as a theoretical part, but I found this as a question also. So I thought that okay, why not to put it as a question in the class? Now let's solve this question, which has been asking gate 2023. What they are saying is that suppose two hosts are connected by a point to point link and they are configured to use stop and wait protocol for reliable data transfer, identify in which of the following scenarios, the utilization of the link is lowest. So they want to have the lowest utilization. So longer link length and the higher transmission rate means what? What should the transmission rate mean? bandwidth right so this is bandwidth so this is basically tt upon tt plus 2tp right so they are asking about uh let me write it as 1 upon 1 plus 2a tp tp is tp upon tt so tp is distance upon velocity Okay, so there, so it is distance upon velocity. I'm not writing for now, and then this is length, right? Distance upon velocity, and then this is length upon bandwidth, which is bandwidth into length. Okay, so now for what, uh, for what thing it will be lowest if you increase both of this distance? I'm they're asking about the distance and bandwidth if you increase both of this which is distance and bandwidth then it will be lowest right so b should be the answer okay sorry i don't have the answer but yeah b is the answer here understood if you increase both of this which is distance and the transmission rate longer link length and the higher transmission rate right okay now let's solve this question what they're saying in a stop and wait protocol every fourth packet is lost if eighth Eight packets are being sent, then find the number of packets that you need to send to send the eight packet basically. So what they're saying is that, that if you are sending, let's suppose one, that is, I mean, it will, it will reach successfully. Then two is fine. Three is fine, but four will be lost, right? So if four is lost, you need to send it again. Then four, five, six, then again, the fourth, fourth, uh, I mean, this is first, second, third, again, the fourth, the seventh again will be lost. Then you need to send seven again, then seven and eight. I mean, you just need to send eight packet, eight, eight packets. So total, how many packets you need to send just to send eight packets total. You need to send how many see this is retransmission. This is also retransmission. Right, two retransmission you are doing, so that is why 10 packets. Yes, so 8 plus 2, 10 total. Is this understood to everyone? If fourth has not been reached, you need to retransmit it. 
if if again the fourth packet which means fourth every fourth packet which means if this has been lost now the and now the next fourth fourth packet first second third and fourth so now again this seven will be lost right if these two packets are being lost then you need to send total 10 packets okay now let's solve this question okay this question is also a gate question um I forgot to put the year. Let me just check the year. Just a second. Can you check the year? Can anyone tell me? Just type on the Google on a wireless link, the probability and just type gate or flow. You will get the year. Okay. So what they're saying is that, uh, on a wireless link, the probability of the packet error is 0 0.2. So basically if you're sending from A to B, then the packet will be having some error is 0 0.2 is the probability here and the stop and wait is used to transfer the data across the link. The channel condition is assumed to be independent of the transmission to transmission. Okay. This is gate 2006 question. Okay. So they are saying that if you're sending some packet, then there is a chance that it will get error with 0 0.2 probability. Okay. And there, let's suppose you're sending multiple packet, then oh, each of the packet can get the error with the similar probability independently, which means it's not like that, that if the first packet has got the error, then there is some, I mean, second packet will, will not get the error or something like that. No, the probability is same. Okay. Okay. So now what they're asking is that, that if you want to send hundred packets, then how many total number of packets you need to send just to send hundred packets. That's what they're asking. So let me just explain this question to you. See what they're saying. If this, this is a, this is B. And if you are sending some packet, then the probability that it will get error is 0 0.2. Now, now it may so happen that whenever you are sending a packet, then it may get error and we will discard it. Then what do you need to do? You need to send it again, right? Till, till the moment that let's suppose there is only one packet. How many times you need to send it? Till the moment there is no error, right? I mean, you need to send it. Maybe there is error. You, if there is an error, then B will just discard it. Then after timeout, you will be again sending it, again sending it, again sending it. How many times you will sending it? I mean, theoretically, can you tell me in English language? Till B get it successfully. Till there is no error, isn't it? Have you understood the question? Now let's just find it out. Before this, let me just ask you one question. Suppose there is a coin. Okay. Coin. This is the coin. Let's suppose this coin is having some probability of head is P and tail obviously will be one minus P. Now you told me, you tell me the expected, expected number of Tosses, tosses to get one head. See, it is possible that you are tossing. It is possible you get head or you get tail, right? Now you may get head with how much probability? with P probability and you may get tail with one minus P probability. Now, if you are getting head, then how many tosses you have done? One toss. If you're getting tail, then how many tosses you have done till now? One toss. And now next, how much you, you are going to do? You are going to restart this process, right? Do you remember this from the probability? We have already solved these kind of questions. So this will be one plus E, right? Okay. So what are the expected number of tosses? You will say that E is either you will be doing one toss with probability P or you will be doing, you will be doing one plus E tosses with probability one minus P, right? Now, if you solve this, what you will be getting, this is E equal to P plus one minus P plus uh, E plus E minus E P, E minus E P, something like that, right? So E, E will get cancelled out. This is E minus E and E will get cancelled out. This will be zero. And then this will be EP equal to one. And then from EP equal to one, you will be getting 
E as one upon P, right? So it means that you need to basically, if the probability of head is let's suppose half, it also seems logical. If the probability of head is half, then you need to twice it. I mean, on on average, okay, on on average, you need to toss it twice to get one head. Is this okay to everyone? It also seems a little logical that if the probability of head is half, then you need to twice, you need to toss it twice, right? So if the probability of head is half, then then toss twice to get head, right? I mean, on on average, basically this is again on on average, on on average, on on average toss twice to get head. Is this fine to everyone? Okay. Okay. I hope that is fine. Now from here, from here, uh, we can find out, I mean, we can relate this particular scenario. So basically, basically I can say if the probability of success of anything, right, is P, then number of trials, number of trials to get the success will be one upon P. Okay. Is this okay to everyone? I mean, that's what we have already done in the probability course. If you remember, then it is fine. That time I told you that it will be uh, coming again in computer networks or maybe in some other uh, places. Okay. So suppose, suppose you are sending some packet, the probability of error is 0 0.2. I mean, the probability of failure is 0 0.2, right? In other words, the probability of success is 0 0.8. So how many number of trials you need to do to get the success? So number of trials to get success is one upon 0 0.8, which is 10 upon eight. Is this fine to everyone? Okay. What does this mean? It means that if you want to send just one packet, this will be, I think, greater than one, right? So on an average, you will be sending 10 upon eight packet, which is, I think 1.25 or something, right? I think this is 1.25. So if you want to send one packet, you will be sending on an average 1.25 packets, which means if you want to send eight packets, then how many packets you will be sending on an average 10 packets you will be sending. Okay. So if you, so this is basically the probability of success is 0 0.8. Then it means that if you want to send one packet, then you will be sending one upon 0 0.8 packets, basically, I mean, uh, to, to just send one packet. So if you want to get, if you want to send hundred packets, then you need to actually send, you need to actually send 10 upon eight just to send one packet. Okay. This is to send one packet. If you want to send hundred packets, then into hundred. You will be sending you, you will end up sending these many packets. So what is this? This is 125. So if you just want to send hundred packets, you will end up sending on on average 125 packets. And that's what they're asking. Okay. That the, what is the average number of transmission attempts required to transfer hundred packets? So what is the answer? B right. 125. Okay. Let me know if you have understood this. This is from the probability. Okay. I know you might not remember it, but if you just try to recall, then we have already solved these things, right? If the probability of success is P, then you will be, you will be needing one upon P trials. If the probability of success to send one, one packet is 0 0.8, then you will be, you will be needing one upon 0 0.8 trials to send one, one packet, which means to send hundred packets, it will be one upon 0 0.8 into hundred, which if you calculate, it will be 125. Okay. So there will be 125 packets that you need to send. See the answer is B. Okay. I mean, you can also do using this GP and all we have discussed these things in the probability. So I'm not going to do this, uh, this as a long method, but yeah, uh, using the short method, we can do what is the short method? Short method is this, right? 
you can you can always calculate the expectation uh, which is one upon p using the sort method if you directly remember that okay expected uh, number of packets you need to send or the expected number of trials if the probability of success is p then it is one upon p then you can directly solve this question if you if you do not remember then you need to solve first like this and then you need to solve this question okay it was a good question i think and uh, this you can remember now right i mean if the probability of success is p then how many trials you need to make to get the success one upon p okay one upon p is the number of trials to get the success is the probability of success is p if the probability of success is p success then one upon p is success okay let's now see this question this question has been asked in mit so what they are saying is that a sender s is sending uh, to a receiver r so s is sending something to r connected over okay over k links so it has the k links okay so each link can lose some packet uh, there there will be some probability to lose some packet let's just see so they are saying link i has a packet loss rate hpi okay so each link can lose the packet so it it has a probability p1 p2 because because the link i has the probability pi to lose the packet in one direction and then they they have also said in other direction this link can lose the packet with qi probability right if you are sending from here to here then with qi probability you can lose the packet not to worry this question is easy only assume that a packet uh, on the link is received or you know, lost independently okay so this question has two parts let's just see on the next page that what they are asking suppose that the probability that a data packet does not reach r so this is s this is r now they are saying suppose that data packet does not reach r when sent by s is p okay which means it doesn't reach r this is the probability with it doesn't reach to r what is the probability it may lose it may lose on this link p1 what is the probability it may lose on this link p2 now they are saying find out the probability that it doesn't go to r what may so happen it may it may also lost here or it may get loose here or something like this right so you need to find out p which is which is the probability that it doesn't get i mean you 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 have sent it but r hasn't received it can you calculate this probability we will come to the other number which is uh, q we will come to that so they are saying that the packet loss uh, does not reach r this is the p probability and if this r is sending it doesn't get to s this is the q probability so what do you think let's just first see this p so i can say this p is let me find out the probability can you find out the probability sometimes we need to think in the negation terms in the probability can you find out the probability that it reaches to r it doesn't get loose here it doesn't get loose here it doesn't get lost at, at any of this link this is the probability it reaches to r right this is the probability it reaches to r now can you tell me the probability it doesn't reaches to r there is a probability so it will be 1 minus right 1 minus whole thing similarly from r to s this will be the answer if uh, if you are sending some packet uh, i mean if you are sending let's suppose acknowledgement it doesn't get i mean uh, our first time finding out that what is the probability it reaches to, from r to s then it doesn't lose here it doesn't lose uh, lose at any of the link then this is the probability 1 minus qk doesn't lose at any of the link then 1 minus is the total probability which is it, it loses is one of the link right so what is the answer here b is the correct answer good question right it was related to probability only nothing related to computer networks just probability kind of question okay see let me try to explain this more let's suppose 
this is a this is uh, yeah this is r this is s there is only let's suppose one uh, one hope in between two links basically the probability from here to here it loses is p1 from here to here it loses it loses the uh, data is p2 let's suppose now can i say that p1 into p2 is the probability that it loses uh okay p1 plus p2 maybe let's suppose uh, let me just guess it p1 plus p2 is the probability it loses either at p1 or p2 can i say that uh if you are sending some data from s to r then this is the probability it will not reach either it loses here or it loses here no so basically basically either you do one thing see you need to find out the probability that it it doesn't reach to r so you need to find out the probability it doesn't reach to r just find out the probability it reaches to r it doesn't lose here doesn't lose here and it is the probability it reaches to r then this is the probability it doesn't doesn't reach to r this is one way to solve it and this is the best way okay but if you want i can tell you some analysis over there see you are starting from s let's suppose this is some intermediate uh, node which is let's suppose a now there are two options from s itself it may lose it may go to a i mean it may lose let's suppose at a itself okay or it reached to a it reached to a and then from here it lose see if we, if it is getting lost then either it can lo can lost here or it can lost here right so if it is if you are losing here let's suppose you are losing here so what is the probability you are losing here p1 is the probability you are losing at this link or or these are the two cases or it goes to a okay or it goes to a which means this is the probability it goes to a and it loses at p2 so either you do do like this or you do like this both must be same let's just check have you understood by the way how we are writing this expression see it goes to a or i mean either it uh, it uh, sorry uh, it loses at a or it goes to a and loses at r so that's how you need to solve goes to a i mean loses at a or goes to a and loses at r right in this particular link so these are the two ways in which we have solved this question let's just see if these two numbers are actually equal or not you can quickly check this is nothing but 1 minus 1 minus p1 and then uh, let me write 1 minus p2 and then minus p1 plus p1 p2 which is same as 1 minus 1 plus p2 plus p1 minus p1 p2 1 1 get cancel out this is p1 plus you can check you can take p2 common right so it will be p1 plus you can take p2 common from these two it will be 1 minus p1 aren't these quantities same right so basically i mean if you are confused that okay or can we just multiply by p1 and p2 like this no it's not or can we just add p1 okay either it loses here or it loses as p2 no it's not like that either it loses here or or it goes here i mean it directly can't lose as this p2 right you directly can't it must first reach to the same then only it can, uh, can, can you, you you can lose at this particular link first must reach to a if you are saying either it uh, it goes uh, either it loses here or loses here it doesn't work like this it will be kind of like super set it will be the more number loses here loses here it it doesn't like this okay it will be this p1 plus p2 must be the greater than this number basically it is it is something more that you are over counting something so p1 it loses here or it goes here goes here and loses at this so this is also fine but let's not do this uh, this calculation right so which one will will you prefer this negation one right have you understood this particular answer short and simple so b is the answer here right
Okay. So just take the negation and do the things, which means it, what is the probability reaches to R first find out the probability reaches to R and then you do your things first find out the probability reaches to R and then you see that, okay, what is the probability? It doesn't reach to R. Okay. Now let's do this question. I mean, this question has two parts. Let's do this question. This is very, very interesting. Now they're saying you're sending something from S to R and there are many, many links in between exactly K links. Okay. This is R, this is S. Now they're saying P is the probability that it lose from here to here and Q is the probability that packet get lost from here to here. Okay, I mean, acknowledgement get lost from here to here. Q is the probability that acknowledgement get lost from here to here. P is the probability that uh, the data uh, lose from here to here. Now they're asking that what is the expected number of transmission that you need to take to just send one packet? See, can you tell me with what probability you are 100% sure that packet reaches uh, from S to R? I mean, uh, the packet has been reached with what probability? S, S will be sure. Okay. One minus P is the probability that the package has been reached from S to R and one minus Q is the probability. And this should not, I mean, acknowledgement should also not get lost. So multiplication of both of the probability, then only S will be sure, right? The packet has been reached. Is this okay to everyone? 1 minus P into 1 minus Q. This is the probability of success that, yeah, we have sent a packet. With this probability, the packet will be sent successfully. If either packet lose or the acknowledgement lose, we will consider that, okay, there is some problem and anyway, it will need to retransmit, right? So with this probability, we will say that, okay, the packet has been reached successfully. So hence, now can you tell me how many retransmission, how many transmissions you need to take expected number of transmissions? Then one upon the success probability. So what is the answer? Yes. Yes, Shivam. Yes, Siddharth. Yes, Devansh. So C is the answer, right? Okay. See this question. This question has been taken from MIT. Good question, right? Okay. So have you understood by the way, this particular derivation? Do you remember this derivation? This is the expected number of tosses till you get one. Tell me these tosses one upon P is the number of tosses. Let's suppose P is 0 0.2 or uh, 0 0.5. Then the, what is the expected number of tosses till you get one? Two, right? If the probability of head is 0 0.5. Now just tell me this two is including the, the toss, the last toss in which you get head or it, it is not including the last toss. It is including, right? We're including this one, one plus C or something like that. So this, this is including, this is including the last toss even. Okay. So the total number of total number of trials I'm talking about is one upon P. Similarly, the total number of transmissions that I'm doing here is, is this, this is the total number of aspect number of transmission. Okay. This is, this is total transmission. It's not like that. Okay. Uh, I mean, excluding something or excluding the uh, the real transmission or something. I mean, you will get to understand that what I'm saying with the next question. So it is basically including. Okay. Anyway, let's just solve this question. In a stop and wait protocol, what is the expected number of retransmissions needed for a single packet with a dropout probability P? What is the answer? See one upon P <laughs> interestingly one upon P is a total transmissions. So one upon P is not the answer total transmissions. Okay. Expected number of total transmissions, which means this, see, let's suppose you are sending some packet 50 times you got failed. And then how many times you will get succeed if you're sending one packet, how many times 
always one time. Last is always one, right? This is the actual transmission. Actual transmission. These are trials. Is this okay to everyone? Can I can I say can I say just tell me can I say let's suppose I'm I'm sending some packet can I say okay this is this is the actual one and after that I will I will be uh, I will be having the trials fifty times trial once I once I send the actual one after that do I have the trial or first the trial I mean keep on trying keep on trying keep on trying at the last I will be sending so I will be writing like this I mean these are the trials trials these are the these are the real transmission, right? I mean, this is the real one, last transmission. So basically, if I'm saying the total transmission is one upon P, then I need to subtract one. How many times I was retransmitting? I mean, this was the actual one I need to subtract. Then I will be getting retransmissions. So retransmissions are this much, which is D, right? These are the retransmissions. One upon P is total, total, and one is the last one. Or maybe I mean the real one, you can say the retransmissions are happening. How many times? One upon P minus one time. Okay. One time you actually transmitted the retransmission if they ask you, which is one upon P minus one. Okay. Just the terminology different. That's why I, I, I had this as a question. Understood? This question has been taken from this university. Okay. Now let's just solve this question which I have taken uh, from some university. I don't have the name here, but anyway, okay. This is really a good question. Okay. Let's just solve this question first. So what they're saying that RTT is given, let me just tell you the question, what they're saying that you are sending something from A to B, right? Yes, Shivam, tell me. So Shivam is having some doubt here. Yeah, you can uh, type your doubt. So basically this one upon P is the total transmission. And what is the retransmission means that how many times you were retransmitting apart from the first one. So basically you can say first one uh, is basically uh, you, you transmitted, you wanted to transmit, then everything else is retransmission. No, no, it is not plus one. One upon P already included everything. The total number of transmission to get the success is one upon P. It includes your all the retransmission and the, including the first transmission, right? So the first transmission is the real transmission actually you were doing and everything else you can consider as a, re, uh, as a uh, retransmission. So minus one because of the first transmission. Okay. Everything else is considered to be retransmission. Okay. So in this question, station A needs to send hundred KB of data to station B. So the length of the data is given to us as hundred KB. So they are saying that the protocol is split the data into frame of size one KB each. So, which means the number of frames are hundred and size of each frame is one KB and file size was RTT is given to us, which is 50 milliseconds. Okay. RTT is given to us is 50 milliseconds. And then they are saying there is no processing, nothing, no other delay and retransmission timeout of 200 milliseconds. This is interesting, which means whenever you are sending the packet, how much time you are waiting? How much time you are waiting? 200 milliseconds. Okay. Till you send, I mean, uh, this is the timeout timer, which is given to us. Timeout timer. This is the first question where we are having the timeout time timer also, which is given to us is 200 milliseconds. If you don't get the ACK within this timer, then you will be basically saying that I need to retransmit. Can you tell me uh, how many times, I mean, uh, that timeout timer is uh, with respect to RTT? How many times it is? Four times, right? I mean, you are basically waiting that, okay, I mean, it should have been arrived in 50 milliseconds. 50 milliseconds na adana chahi tha. But you're waiting four times of that. Maybe kuch delay ho gaya ho ga, idhar udhar ho gaya ho ga, right? You're waiting four times of that. And then you're saying, Ab nahi aega. now let me retransmit it. Okay. That's what they are having the timeout timer. Now they are saying the, how long will the transmission take 
in seconds if the network does not drop duplicate or corrupt any packets how long you will be taking if the rtt is given directly right you don't need to calculate the rtt for one packet you will be taking 15 milliseconds for 100 packets how much how many you will be taking how much time how long you will be taking easy question right 50 milliseconds into 100 this is 5 seconds right so you will be taking 5 seconds easy question now let's just do the second part of the same question okay so what the second part says let's just see second part is little interesting one so what they're saying is that let us now suppose the network drop each frame the probability with the probability 10% independently from each other the network drop both the data and the acknowledgement both both it is dropping okay what is the expected duration of the transmission expected duration of the transmission that's very nice question let me just explain you see if you are sending some one packet if you are sending one packet for one packet how much expected duration you will be taking let's just let's just calculate it how many tries you will be making for one packet see with one 10% mean one upon 10 probability the packet may lose and with one upon 10 probability ac ki may also lose right so with this probability you will not be you will not be getting the uh, i mean either data data will be losing or ac ki will be losing with this probability is this okay to everyone let me know do you want to try this question first or should i solve just try it for 1 minute maybe it is worth okay okay so let's now do it so basically 1 upon 10 is the probability to lose the data right from this link to this link okay now what is the probability that data will get successfully delivered will be 9 upon 10 what is the probability that ac ki will also get successfully delivered it will also 9 upon 10 right so basically 0.81 is the probability that your data will successfully safe and sound reach and ac ki will also be reaching right this is the probability okay now now how many total transmissions you will be doing to send just one one packet it will be one upon p is this okay to everyone the total transmissions for one packet now interestingly out of this out of this one upon p let me write this one upon p as 1 upon p minus 1 and 1 i mean summation of these two numbers okay why i am writing i will tell you see this 1 upon p minus 1 packets will be taking how much time out of this 1 upon p these many packets will be taking how much time time out time because these were the failed attempts right and you waited for time out will they be taking rtt or they will be taking time out you waited till time out that is why these many packets will be taking time out time so these many packets will be taking time out time because these are the failures this will be taking the rtt that's very interesting right so so you can say here that that the total time to send to just one packet basically you need to send these many packets that is fine but in terms of time total time total transmissions are 1 upon p that i agree right but total time will be different i mean it's not like 1 upon p into rtt or 1 upon p into uh, time out total time taken to send one packet only one packet is basically equal to it will be it will be 
200, which is a timeout timer into one upon P minus one, 200. I mean, these many packets will be taking 200 milliseconds. And this last packet will be taking 50 milliseconds because it is RTT. Okay. This is the total time to send just one packet. Is this okay to everyone? Okay. So can you calculate this number quickly? The total time to send one packet 200 into one upon 0 0.81 minus one plus 50. One upon 0 0.81 minus one. One upon point eight one minus one into two hundred forty six point nine one, right? Plus fifty. Sorry, forty six point nine one plus fifty. So it is ninety six point nine one. milliseconds. This is the time that one packet will be taking. Have you understood this? This is very important. I mean, this is, this was very tricky and very nice question. Extremely tricky. I think that one upon P first, you need to figure out that, okay, one upon P is the total, uh, transmissions you will be taking out of those total transmissions, right? Total transmission. These are the total transmissions. Out of those total transmissions, one upon P minus one will be failure. They, you must have waited till timeout and, and they, they have taken till timeout and last packet just taken RTT time, which means that, that you are sending something timer expire. You are sending something for this packet timer expired, sending something. And for the last packet, you are saying, okay, sending something and received. So this is an RTT. Otherwise everything has taken timeout timer. Everything has taken timeout timer. This is again timeout. Okay. The only last packet has taken RTT. So this much time just to send one packet. And now you want to send how many packets? hundred packets, just multiply by the hundred and then you will get your answer. Let's just see. Okay. This was very tricky question. I hope you were able to understand that. See 96.91 millisecond just for one packet. And if you multiply by the hundred, then it will be in the seconds for the hundred packets. This is just for one packet. Multiply this by hundred and you will get your answer. See 200 time they have taken. This is time out. These many packets taken 200 time. This is just last packet has taken RTT. Was this a nice question? Let me know. Were you able to understand that question? Okay. Yeah. So this was really a nice question, right? Now let's just solve this question. If you found that question as a nice question, now let's just solve this question. What they're saying, consider the stop and wait protocol. Now PF is the probability of frame error in going from station A to station B. Suppose the propagation processing delays are, are negligible. Okay. Suppose RTT is T and timeout timer at the sender is Okay. Sorry. This is set set as set as twice of RTT, which means timeout is given to us as two T and RTT is given to us is T ACK does not get lost or have error. I mean, only the packet may, may be uh, having uh, some error with the probability PF. So this is one upon one minus PF. And then out of this one will be good enough. And one upon one minus PF minus one, which is as good as saying one minus one plus PF upon one minus PF, which is PF upon one minus PF, right? Which is PF upon one minus PF. Yeah. So these PF upon one minus PF, these many, these many, uh, you can say, uh, packets will be taking how much time? Time out time, right? This will be taking how much time? This will be taking RTT time, which is given to be T. This is given to be 2T. So total time will be T plus 2T into PF upon 1 minus PF. Okay. So, yeah. So I think C is the answer. Okay. I hope you understood. 
so with this we stop our stop and wait okay so we have just completed our stop and wait very nicely all the variations all the possible variations efficiency throughput timeout anything whichever is possible till the last page of google okay i have i have seen all the variations whatever i could have found out i have just uh, made the questions out of them and uh, all the gate pyqs everything we have covered in stop and wait okay now you should be more comfortable in any of these questions okay so that is all for stop and wait tomorrow we will be starting go back end and sliding window protocols okay. so thank you everyone take care bye bye